A crackdown has begun in Zimbabwe amid violent protests over the government's doubling fuel prices. Officials say police have arrested more than 600 people. In the capital city, Harare, they also seized an activist pastor at his home today. He's accused of inciting public violence through social media. The fuel price hike adds to an economic crisis that includes unemployment above 80%. A warm welcome back to GMT with me, Stephen Sacker. The authorities in Zimbabwe have again cut off internet services four days after the start of violent protests over fuel price hikes. The country's largest mobile operator, Econet, says it has been ordered to shut down services until further notice, though the order is being challenged in court. A similar blackout earlier in the week was aimed at blocking images of the Zimbabwean security forces' heavy-handed actions against demonstrators. At least three people have been killed and dozens injured. Well, joining me now from Johannesburg is BBC correspondent Pumza Filani. Pumza, I know you're following developments very closely in Zimbabwe. Suggest this decision to shut down the internet again suggests that the government remains deeply anxious about the state of public opinion and about dissent in Zimbabwe. That's right, Stephen. It's widely seen. This latest move by the government is seen as a way of censoring the information that comes out of Zimbabwe about what is actually happening on the ground. Now, the internet, just in the past week where we've seen these protests, was widely used by people who were in the country through social media to get the word out. They were posting photographs of police intimidation, and they were posting images of, of the protests themselves as a way of garnering support across the continent, not just in Zimbabwe, but across the continent and the world to show the world what was actually happening there. So this latest move is seen by human rights groups as an attempt to make sure that no information or very little information goes out of Zimbabwe about the situation there. From what you're hearing and from your sources, are protests continuing? Because it did look as though they died down somewhat after the clashes, which led to, we believe, at least five deaths. But, but what is the situation right now? That's right. We understand that at the moment there are there is still an appetite from activists, certainly, to rally around um, f f getting together another group of protests next week. We don't have timings or dates for that, but we certainly understand that this isn't the end of the road for the people of Zimbabwe. They are intent on fighting um, against this latest fuel hike, but also are seeing it as an opportunity to show the current government that they are not happy with the state of affairs in the country. They are not happy with the failing economy and fuel shortages and basic food, the shortage of basic foodstuffs. And they're seeing this as an opportunity to show the current president, Emerson Mnangagwa, that not enough has changed in Zimbabwe and they are certainly claiming that he has not delivered on his, on his election promises of reforming the country. All right, Pumza, thank you very much. Pumza Filani there in uh, Johannesburg for us.